。哦，不是太满意了，不是很满意，不是很满意，还算满意，没有很满意，不太满意。In China, social appearances anxiety is common among women, especially young college students. To ease it, some rely on makeup to hide their flaws on their face. One of the main things they will do is to use light foundations to make them look lighter. Hi everyone, my name is Patient Li. As an anthropology major student from UCLA, Lamson on the program, my research, Chinese colorism, the significance of whining. In skin color to Chinese college women shows that young Chinese women prefer white skin, no matter if they have experiences of living abroad. Globally speaking, using whitening products is become more and more popular right now. This message and ads rely on a concept called colorism, which is defined as a process of discrimination that privileges light skin people of color over dark skin counterparts. Colorism is a product of racism in the United States in that it upholds the white standards of beauty and benefits the lighter-skinned people in the institutions of oppression. Colorism and racism are distinctive, but they intertwine as a system of hierarchy and power structure. Racism may be shown in Chinese advertisement. For example, a black man is washed whiter in a Chinese racist. Detergent advertisement. Although the laundry product company apologized later, they denied the racial slur in commercial that has outraged the world. In order to understand Chinese colorism, I conduct the surveys, interviews, and advertisement analysis. One hundred Chinese college female students responded to my survey. Survey questions include: Why do you prefer white skin? What does white skin mean, and so on? My research first finds that the preference of white skin can be traced back to ancient times. My participants mentioned that there are white skin girls from Asian Chinese paintings. Chinese poems and poetry often praise white skin girls. For example, they talked about Shi Jing, Chinese oldest collection of poems. Praising a great princess fairness by saying a skin is like a white cream. Also, the old saying that guides today's beauty standard, 一白遮三丑 meaning a white complexion can hide several flaws, can be funny in Asian Chinese documentaries. Next, my research also found that skin color is utilized to determine a person's social identity, family background, and further health situations. My participants believe that people with lighter skin tones usually come from wealthy or privileged families. They don't need to work hard under the sun, so they usually look healthy and with good qi se, which translates as little energy. It is a common word to describe a person's health based on her skin color. Persons in low-status occupations, such as farmers, labored in the sun, have darker skin and usually look unhealthy and lack nutrition. They are usually thought to have bad qi se. Therefore, white skin remains a distinguished social factor associated with purity and elite status. Nowadays, whining culture in China has shown itself in selfies and social media. My participants said they have peer pressure of not having white skin because it's very common to see their friends Photoshop pictures with lighter skin color on social media, such as WeChat and TikTok. None of their friends post their selfies without changing their skin color into whiter. They also notice that there is、uh, also an overwhelming preference for. Very white skin models, actors, and idols. White skin is still very much idolized today because white skin is beautiful, and beauty itself functions as a form of social capital that is traded for access to goods such as jobs, education, social networks, and romantic partners. As a result, young Chinese women seek ways to lighten their skin. One of my participants was born in China, and she immigrated to the U.S. when she was 12 years old. She says she still Like to use sunscreen, and like other Chinese women who wear clothing, which will be able to protect them from UV exposure to cover the people's entire face under the sun. Most common thing they will do is to use whitening products. My research also found 
out that beauty influencers use the proverbs and the compared visual images to shape the ideology of wineless beauty in Chinese culture to encourage the consumption of their wine products. Since young women are inclined to buy it because of white skin is an ideal self-image, reinforced by advertisements that are being constructed in their minds. Next, my research shows that appearances and anxiety issues were centralized in Chinese women's everyday experiences as they face significant societal and peer pressure to keep beauty with white skin and use whining products. This video was filmed by a YouTuber. She called on the public not to judge girls' appearances because she suffers from appearances anxiety. In my interviews, my participants also worry about their appearances. For example, one girl mentioned that she wanted to lose weight to 88 pounds because Chinese actresses and beauty influencers are always around that weight. It makes them look prettier in front of the camera. 88 pounds is the average weight for 13 to 14 years old girls in the U.S. Another girl said, I want to have lighter skin because my skin is so dark right now. I use whining product, but it is sensitive to my skin. From the conversation, it shows that colorism has negative consequences. At last, I want to say people are special because we have different race and colors. We should be proud of ourselves to have white, dark, or yellow color. Society will be better if we don't judge others by its color. And promise me, promise me one thing. That you'll start judging people not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Governments should support or initiate social programs that encourage people to appreciate diversity in skin color and not to make simple connection between being white and being beautiful and successful. Public education and activism on this issue must prove to protect the health and self-esteem of women who have dark skin in China. You are beautiful no matter what they say. Thank you for listening. I would like to say thanks to La Monson Anthropological Honors Program, my faculty mentor Dr. Pierre and Dr. Yan, my TA Renina, Maddie, also my La Monson cohort. I would like to appreciate all the support and help from Dr. Boom, Dr. Garo, Dr. Holland, Dr. Toyuta, Dr. Lashore, and Dr. Lloyd.